Hello guys, welcome back to Maya's Bug, the most creative name ever. I'm Maya, your host. Uh, today we're going to be uh, building some upper A-arms, or we're going to be duplicating the upper A-arm that I've already built for Maestro. And uh, I'm going to take you along. But first, I'm out here with my little buddy, Cole. And he's learning how to use this press. So we've already been smushing this metal here, and now he's going to smush this cork. So let's see what's happening. Even though it seems like he's just playing, this is all learning experience. Also, we're out here with Cooper. <laughs> Hi, Cooper. This fell out. <clears throat> this fell out. Oh, okay. We got to smoosh it better. <laughs> we need to build... Uh, another one of these. This is uh, the right side, or no, the left side, upper A-arm. Um, so far I only have one, so I need to build another one of these. I got to uh, first build a jig off this one, that way they're exactly the same. Um, and then I got to uh, plasma cut these upper plates, lower plates, and start to get it jigged up. Cut out these brackets here, and finish up this back tube where the Time joints might mount up. So we'll get that going. Um, but I am guilty of working on some other things. Right, Cole? Yeah. So I got a little distracted with this thing. This is the port band saw table that I built. Um, it only took about a couple hours, two and a half hours or something, but um, I was distracted and it wasn't fun to build. So. But now I got this little porta band saw, so I'll be able to cut a lot of the pieces really easy. This entire thing's built out of eighth inch plate. So this is uh, eighth inch top plate, eighth inch lower plate. All the internals are all eighth inch. Um, the only thing that's not eighth inch is these two tabs here. These are quarter inch thick. Um, this one runs through here and then is terminated here and this one runs all the way up through and then is welded on the back side here So it sticks out and then I put two beads on either side So this is the board that I used to uh, Manufacture the lower arms. So this was the jig um, It didn't look like this whenever I was using it. It had a bunch of pieces of wood screwed down to it And then I had slots routed out for where the pivot tubes went Um, you can see it's been all marked up where I was welding on it, but um, on this end, I had this bolted down on here, and then this was setting the um, the spacing between the pivot points for the uniball. So I'll do something similar like that for the upper arm. I'll flip this thing over, and um, yeah, we'll get going on another upper. So all I've done so far is I cut some blocks of wood, um, screwed, them, screwed them on around the outside the perimeter of the uh, upper A-arm. Uh, I marked it out on the table. Um, then I added in this uh, piece here. That's going to set the spacing here for the pivot point where the ball joint goes. And then over here where it mounts to the chassis, um, I just set up these blocks here so I could just push this main crossbar all the way up against these blocks. And then this one will set it uh, for naft this way. So it can't move that way. It's gonna be pushed all the way up against these blocks here. And then that will set my distance up to here, more or less. I still have to cut a couple pieces off this, um, I don't know, 3 8 inch aluminum angle. 
drill some 9 16 holes, and then I'll mount those here in the exact locations where those go. So I got the aluminum uh, brackets cut. Um, I'm getting ready to drill these now, but I need to make sure that I'm setting the correct height for the hole. So from the from the bottom of my tool here, up to the top here, or up to the center of the hole, uh, it needs to be about 0.95 inches. So then I'm gonna mark these out on here, get these drilled up, and mount them here. All right, I got these uh, aluminum brackets all drilled up, cleaned up. D-Bird, they're ready to go. This hole's uh, drilled out to 9 16 and then I drilled a couple holes here so I can mount it to the uh, wood top. Um, I'm thinking I actually might use uh, this mock-up uniball I got from my buddy, uh, Brad Nipper, over at BSD Designs, check him out, um, rather than uh, using this spacer I made. So I got the uh, aluminum brackets mounted up. I did have to clearance this board in order to get this uni ball to uh, clear because it was a little bit high. Um, but once I get all that in, um, it's fitting really nice. I got a shim under here to simulate the skin with a lower plate. Um, but other than that, I think the jig is done. This is good enough for what I'm trying to go for. And I mean, this isn't a uh, Morgan Clark style jig, but this will work for uh, what I'm doing. Another thing is I use this uh, wooden jig or this wooden template uh, to cut out my uh, upper and lower plates last time. Um, I used a plasma cutter. Uh, it got pretty tore up. So um, either I'm gonna remake this or I'm gonna try to tune it up a little bit and try to get this one to work. Um, it, I got snagged up a couple times and it kind of just burned up my wood template. So. Um, I think it's going to work still if I just uh, put a little work into it, but uh, I'm going to do that and then we'll just do some time lapse and get some parts cut and start jigging this thing up.
actually a lot of work. Um, I think we're gonna end the video here. Got through all the time lapse, uh, got all the parts cut. Um, I did end up uh, cutting out this big section here to lighten up that back tube. That's what I did on the other one. Um, yeah, and then we're gonna go through on the next video, part two, and we'll start cutting or start bending and cutting all these pieces here inside the middle uh, to box it all out. And then I got my second plate here ready to go with all the angles. And I'll be bending all that in this new uh, little bending tool that I made. So we'll go over that a little bit. We can make some really nice bends with that. So until next time, catch you later.